Well, I kind of knew I was in trouble before this segment even started, because <laughs> Brian had an idea to garden with style. And you know, your version of style, Superfly, is a, is a little bit different than most. Yes, gardening with style, <laughs> yes, for sure. You know, here at, on Let's Talk Gardening, we have all these segments that give lots of great gardening information. And I love those information segments, but today I wanted to impart some gardening inspiration. And you know, well, you're uh, inspiring, my friend. I'll tell why, you that for thank sure. You. Why? Thank you. And what the reason I'm doing that is because I think everyone should develop a gardening style, and they should do things that are important to them, and that they're that they like, and that they're passionate about, and they should transfer those things to the garden. And that brings me to why I'm wearing this incredible Superfly outfit. Is that I feel that people express themselves in all these other ways, and then in the garden, it's just a line of green things with a tall green thing at the end. People might express themselves in the way they dress, and now everyone may not be able to pull off uh, red velvet and zebra, but they express themselves in the type of uh, accessories that they have, like this cane. I know with women it's purses and it's shoes. They express themselves in the cars that they drive. They express themselves inside the house, but then you go outside and it's a long line of green things with a tall green thing at the end. So what I'm trying to do is get people to express themselves and when you start to to garden with things that are important to you, when you start to garden with things that you're passionate about, and when you start to put your life experiences into the garden, gardening becomes more fun, less a labor, a more labor of love and less labor. And so that's what I'm gonna try to do today is show you how to garden with a little bit of style. Now, you can do anything. Like, Jennifer, I know you love to cook. Mm -hmm. You may incorporate food into your garden. Things like vegetables or herbs. Mm -hmm. You may incorporate a little fruit tree or berries or something like that. Other people, they like wildlife habitat. And so they may have uh, things for the birds and the butterflies. <laughs> and uh, like, you may- Go, love, you're on you a roll, love, keep going. You may love Italy, <laughs> or you maybe have Italian heritage. And so you may want a Mediterranean style garden. So anything where, that you love, anything that is in your life, you can take and you can lay that out in the garden. We've got some themed gardens here at TLC, and I wanted to show you a few themed gardens that we have here. Uh, we're gonna start, this is a garden that is a cottage garden style and it's also incorporated a whole lot of wildlife habitat plants. So we have in here a style, a cottage garden style, an English cottage garden style, which is a very eclectic style with a lot of different stuff. We've got herbs, flowers, we've got a fruit tree in here. So you have a lot of different stuff in a, in a cottage garden style, but we've also melded that with a wildlife habitat style. So these are plants that birds, hummingbirds and songbirds like. Mm -hmm. It really should be, when people walk up to the garden, they should it should tell them something about the owner. I agree, exactly. Just like your vehicle or where, the way you dress, yeah. you can glean something off the owner just by looking at their garden. I think that that's a great point. And you want to show us a couple of other gardens. Yes, I've got some, uh, I've got some other theme style gardens here at TLC and we can go take a look at those. Well, let's take a, a let's wander. <laughs> All right, so now this is a different type of feeling entirely from what we just saw. Definitely. Jennifer, I'm, this was a bed surrounded by asphalt, hot, dry, there's no irrigation system to it. So instead of trying to fight the problem, I tried to just go with the flow and I turned this bed into a desert style bed or a southwestern style bed. So what, we've got some yuccas and cactus. Yes, and cactus. yucca, cactus, agave. Like Lots some, of rose moss, mm -hmm. and instead of mulch, I used gravel. And there's also a lot of rocks and things like that in this bed. And so it really has a really dry desert feel to it. And up here is the good old desert willow. It really does feel like New Mexico or Arizona. Thank you, I had a customer that uh, moved here from Arizona and she walked by my bed and she said, you know, that bed made me feel like home. Yeah. And, I, and, that, and I started to explain that to her, you know, you can re recreate this in your landscape and have a little mm -hmm. slice of Arizona right in your own landscape. Right. It, it has to be at the right spot. That's right. You gotta That's have a right. whole lot of sun. You gotta have lots of sun in a nice dry area. Mm -hmm. This bed over here is our Mediterranean style bed and really we've just packed it with flowers right now when we just want it to really pop and be beautiful. But uh, originally this was a Mediterranean style flower bed. Boy, those, the color combinations are just wonderful. And, I, and one thing that I noticed too, sometimes we'll say, well, you need to use 
you know, complementary colors or whatever. This is all just, it's not random. I know it's yeah. planned, but the colors, there are random color palettes and they just work together. Yes, that's a rare, very good point. And that's another style of gardening that I like to play with is color themed gardens. I've done white gardens and all different types of color themed gardens, which I think are very neat. Whereas this one is just a, just a kind of a mishmash of colors. Then what do we have down here? Now down here is a bog garden. Hmm. And you'll notice it may not be as pretty as some of the other gardens, but this is an area where all the water runs to. And so it's always been a problem. It's always stayed wet and plants didn't do well here. And so instead of again trying to fight it, like with the desert bed, instead of trying to fight it, I just went with it. And I planted plants that love it wet. And so that whole area is a bog. It stays wet, it stays nasty. And a lot of people have those situations in their yard and can incorporate that bog garden into their yard. Well, and that's why that weeping cypress looks so good there. They, they love the water. The weeping bald cypress loves the water and it's mm -hmm. also relatively drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's great and I think that's a good point to make. Go with it. If you've mm -hmm. got, you know, environments that you can't do anything about, yeah, that's just right. go with it. Go with the flow. That's Boy, right. Boy, look at this. That, the red, red hot, hot poker, poker is oh. just going crazy. That looks fantastic. Yeah, I love those colors and that is a hummingbird magnet. And just in passing, another one I'd like you to get, Hal, that's fernleaf buckthorn. I just love that plant, and I think folks should plant it more often. I have that in front of my window in my house. I enjoy mm -hmm. it. The birds, I like it too. It's deciduous. It's deciduous, so yeah. So you have really, but it's very interesting in the wintertime too, and the birds love it. Now, I wanted to end up at this bed here. This is my tropical garden, and it also has a color theme in it. It's a tropical style garden with a color theme of oranges and reds and yellows. So a warm season, a warm garden, as well as a tropical style garden. And I've incorporated things like this huge palm tree in here, some other palms, and just all kinds of uh, big leaves and bold colors. You know, and I tell you that it, what's interesting to me that works over here on the left hand side, you've got a caladium and typically they need to be in the shade. Yes. But this is getting morning sun. Exactly, exactly. But it's, it's all protected in the afternoon. It's protected in the afternoon. And then some of this bed is actually in the sun in the afternoon. So on the other side, I have plants that are actually working in sun. So it, this was actually a challenge to begin with. Okay. But in the end, I accepted it and it was, it was, it was pretty interesting because I could use both shade plants and sun plants in the exact same bed. Well, and it's probably very important, I would think, to be out there at different times of the day, particularly in the afternoon like between you know two to five that's probably that, i agree that's really important to know what your sun and shade patterns yeah. are in your bed because you have kind of little microclimates of things that can work like i would I, I was surprised to see that here in full sun but mm -hmm. it makes sense the afternoon yes it's protected yes, the sun will move over here and, that, and also it will provide some shade for this right. palm as well well superfly thank you for showing us well, how to I garden with you. style <laughs>